In this section, I'm going to talk about Bernoulli equation. Specifically, I'm going to derive Bernoulli equation for you. Bernoulli equation is one of the top five most used equations in fluid mechanics. And you're going to use this equation and um, a more complex form of it throughout the semester and beyond the semester as civil engineers. So um, we are going to derive Bernoulli equation having two assumptions. Remember that every equation has different forms um, having different assumptions. Our assumptions would be that our flow is going to be steady. This is assumption number one. And just to recap what was steady flow, steady flow ch says that changes of velocity over time is zero. In other words, velocity does not change with time. And assumption number two is that we are deriving Bernoulli's equation along a streamline. Perfect. So what I'm going to do in order to derive Bernoulli equation, I'm going to select a particle on a streamline. So let me write it actually. Select. As you can see in this figure that I have provided on this slide, the black particle has been selected on a streamline. So uh, based on that, I can tell that S is particle's position. As you can see over here, S shows you the position of the particle, basically the coordinates that the particle moves uh, along the streamline. And then UT, by now you know that UT is a unit vector tangent to the streamline. And un, again, is a unit vector, this time normal to streamline. So if I want to write the equation for velocity, velocity only changes with distance or space or s. And it doesn't change with time. Why? Because assumption number one says that we have steady flow. All right, so now what we are going to do is using Euler's equation to derive Bernoulli equation. So I'm going to apply Euler's equation, Euler's equation in the tangent direction. So let's write down Euler's equation. Euler's equation tells us that there's a negative sign and we have the changes of uh, piezometric pressure and this changes over a direction L and I'm going to actually specify my direction L to be in direction S it would be equal to Rho and uh, acceleration acceleration because we are writing this equation in direction of UT it would be acceleration in direction of T now also we know how to find acceleration in direction of t we have we know we already know the equation for that which is velocity changes of velocity over space plus changes of velocity over time right now again based on our assumption number one we can say that this term is equal to zero because velocity does not change with time so i'm going to actually Put the value, the equation for acceleration, acceleration sub t into the Euler's equation and rewrite the equation over here. So it would be. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply take this velocity over here and put it inside this derivative. How do I do that? Okay, pay attention to this and see. So the left-hand side of the equation is going to remain the same for now because I'm going to work with the right-hand side of the equation. And then right-hand side of the equation, rho is rho. I'm going to move velocity inside the derivative. And it, the, the, the derivative would be velocity squared divided by 2. Okay, now to understand this, it's very easy to understand. The derivative of this term 
the derivative of this term actually so the derivative of this term velocity squared divided by 2 is equal to this right all right so just to show you how it works actually I'm gonna write it over here if I ask you what would be the derivative of velocity squared over 2 you would tell me this would be uh, 2 velocity divided by 2 v s right and these cancel each other out so it would be velocity changes of velocity over a space right that's how it works now um, I'm going to uh, move all the terms to one side so based on this equation that I derived over here I'm going to move okay now take a look at this equation this equation tells you that derivative of whatever we have in bracket is equal to zero so based on mathematics you know that when the derivative of something is zero that something should be a constant first of all let, let me write it down and then I will give you an example so what I said is when the derivative let me give you an example for example if I ask you what is the derivative of number two you would sit, tell me that derivative of number two is equal to zero why because two is a constant is a number right so in this case we know that the derivative of this term in brackets should be zero so based on that I can infer that that term in brackets which is P plus gamma Z plus Rho velocity squared divided by 2 is equal to a constant C and C is the constant right so this format of um, this format that I have written over here is called the pressure form of Bernoulli equation so I'm gonna actually quickly write it over here this is the pressure form of Bernoulli's equation why is it called pressure form because every single component of this equation has units of pressure so we have pressure over here units of that would be pressure if you calculate the units for gamma times Z the units for that would be also pressure and the units for this term is also pressure as well that's why it's called the pressure form normally there's another form of Bernoulli's equation which is called head form and head has the units of length right so if I divide the pressure term divided by specific weight it would be something like this it would be P divided by gamma specific weight plus Z plus velocity squared divided by 2 G is equal to a constant C right this form of the equation is called head form of Bernoulli and head form has all of the, the units for every component of this equation would be um, basically meters or feet basically the dimension of that would be length right okay so this equation that I just derived in this slide is called Bernoulli equation remember our assumptions our assumptions are number one we derived Bernoulli for steady flow also we derived Bernoulli along one streamline okay perfect so now we're going to talk about interpretation of Bernoulli equation and how to use it in real life problems now we can interpret Bernoulli's equation in different ways the first type of interpretation that I'm going to show you tells you that energy is conserved let me give you some definitions first so these three terms they are called total head so 
the first term over here represents pressure head. The second term over here represents elevation head. And the third term represents velocity head. All right, so we already know that um, pressure head plus elevation head is piezometric head, right? So I can say that these two terms also represents piezometric head. And then plus, the last term is velocity head. So we know that summation of piezometric head and velocity head is always constant along streamline. This will help us a lot when we are solving problems. So piezometric head might change and velocity head might change in our system, specifically in our pipeline, but the summation of these two will always be constant. And we are going to use this to solve many problems and to understand many problems. So the first interpretation was that the energy is conserved, meaning that the summation of piezometric head and velocity head is going to be constant along the streamline. This is an important point, along the streamline. The second interpretation comes handy to show us the velocity and pressure very inversely. So this time I have the pressure form of Bernoulli equation on this slide. This term, you already know that it's piezometric pressure, it can be shown by P sub star or P sub Z, piezometric pressure. So I can rewrite the equation as P sub star plus rho velocity squared divided by two and this term, by the way, can be called kinetic uh, pressure. All right, so we know that this term is constant. So the interpretation says that the piezometric pressure and velocity must vary inversely so that the sum of piezometric pressure and kinetic pressure is constant. In other words, because we want this to be constant, whenever velocity increases, piezometric pressure must decrease so the sum of these two is constant and vice versa, right? So this is the second interpretation that tells us velocity and pressure vary inversely. Now, after I'm done talking on this slide, I'm going to show you a very quick animation on how these two vary, actually, and how you can tell that these two vary in a pipeline. 